the Freifunk acted as an umbrella organization for the for Freifunk acted as an umbrella organization for Linux. That is, we got uh, three students in the Google Summer of Code uh, thanks to Freifunk, and we will uh, present uh, two of the three projects. Unfortunately, I'm the only student here that worked at the Google Summer of Code last year, and but Saveri will present for one of the other students. Uh, and then, I don't know, maybe I read there is also Mitar presenting yeah. something. Uh, it happened the same with, uh, Willa, uh, with Ljubljana, that is, uh, Freifunk contacted as an umbrella organization also for them. And, yeah, perhaps I can start. Okay, uh, my project was Radiomate, was called Radiomate. The name was invented by that guy with the hat over there. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, we have our, uh, associated, you know, related to many community networks in Europe, uh, some radios or uh, web radios or real radios. Uh, that's the case of Radio Blau from Leipzig, Radio Sona from Ljubljana, and uh, I don't know why that, GTF8. Yeah. <laughs> and Fuso Radio in Rome, that is a web radio that is uh, uh, hosted in the Fuso Lab, that is our hackerspace headquarter. And you can go there and uh, do a transmission, a web radio transmission, or uh, transmit from home, okay? Actually, they are using server-side closed source software, Windows and all the Shit. <laughs> so <laughs> we departed from Liquid Soap, that is a, a, a framework, a software, uh, very flexible, uh, and tried to adapt it to to our needs. But uh, we had, but Liquid Soap has some limitations. That is, for example, cannot handle uh, timetables. That is, you have a scheduling on a radio. Uh, it cannot handle users, playlists, audio files, and stuff like this. And doesn't have any API to interact uh, uh, with websites, like, for example, a JSON API. So this is the big picture. Something is missing here. Don't know why. What's the database? OK. This is RadioMate. That is liquid soap with a Python wrapper to implement what's missing. We have an IceCast server and users uh, interacting or with the website, okay, that is the web from 10, or uh, hearing the stream uh, attached to the IceCast server. Uh, what I did was this part, okay, the engine, uh, the web radio engine, okay. Uh, the source code is available at radiomate.org. And so the idea is to have uh, this uh, scheduling, uh, this module that uh, uh, sends uh, uh, slots to Liquid Soap that plays them. Okay? So we use uh, Radiomate for the Python part for scheduling the, the transmission and the Liquid Soap part to actually uh, stream them or mix the streams, okay? So, for example, you can have uh, uh, several shows, several transmissions, one after another, uh, very different. For example, we can have a, a WJ that wants to talk and put some music, or, you know, a recorder show. And also, uh, we wanted the possibility to have the takeover. That is, if there is something important, something uh, uh, new and want to uh, take over the whole uh, web radio stream, we wanted that to be possible. Okay. We invented some slot types. For example, a reading, uh, what we call slot, is a transmission, okay, a type of transmission. For example, a reading transmission would have a background music playlist uh, a client attached to the server that can uh, uh, 
you know, talk on, on, uh, or read, and also a fallback playlist. That is, if the client loses his connectivity, we can, however, uh, have some, something going on the radio. Okay, this is, uh, for example, you can have two clients streaming at the same time, one for music, one for uh, words, uh, or we can make two uh, WebJs transmit at the same time from their homes, and, or a IRC bot, IRC bot, uh, so that uh, it can play the songs for the users in, the, in an IRC chat. Okay, this, uh, this kind of slots are pluggable, that is, uh, can be easily developed and can be easily added the new, new types of transmission to the, to the framework. Okay, so this was done. What we're missing to make this fully functional uh, to, the, to deploy it is, a, is the web front end. Okay, we have the JSON API that's working, the whole engine is working, the, the streaming is working, but we don't have any fancy user interface. And so uh, I hope I will be working on that on the next Google Summer of Code or, or maybe not, out of the Google Summer of Code. <laughs> However, I will do it. Okay. <laughs> That's all. Thank you. Can we see a, do you have a live demo? A what? Do you have a live demo of something that's using this? Uh, yes, but uh, I have to prepare it. Okay. okay. <laughs> Maybe we can show later. Yes, right? sure. Yeah, the idea is that if anyone is interested uh, in any of these projects that we present now, we are uh, here today and tomorrow, so we can like not have a live demo now that will take too much time, but go deeper into details. Okay. KD. Ah, this is Mia, okay. Yeah. Thank you. The idea of developing RadioMate came out from uh, our community because we have this guy doing the web radio and there is no other software that makes this stuff in open source. So this was actually not very network related, but we tried to fill a gap where something was missing. Okay? So if you know people that make web radios, maybe you should point them to this RadioMate project because the only way today to do professional uh, scheduling of transmissions is only stuff based on Windows and on a closed source. So maybe it's more important than you can imagine. <coughs> It's coming up? Okay, cool. Okay, another project that uh, we uh, managed in the Google Summer of Code as Linux was this uh, UDP generic encapsulation kernel module. Uh, I, um, I was part of this project as a mentor. Uh, the student was Marco that maybe many of you met in Berlin. Uh, what's the idea? I, I will just uh, show you the figures. I don't want to uh, bother you too much with the details. The key, idea, uh, the key idea here was that you have the mesh network and then usually you have multiple gateways. And these gateways are ADSL in the um, home of the people that share their internet connection and uh, they have different IP addresses. So you usually have NAT here and there and uh, this causes a problem because once you're using one of the gateways, you have to stick to it. Otherwise, all your connections will drop. So how uh, we solve this in Linux and how uh, we are solving this also in, an, in many other community networks like uh, Meter in Ljubljana, what we do is that we get all the traffic from our gateways and we convey the traffic to a fast server in the internet and we make the actual NAT there. So we don't have the problem of route flapping around our gateways because anyways the, the final NAT is done in that other place. Okay, but 
so we have a VPN from our devices to the central server and this VPN if you have a very cheap device is a problem because it's a problem with performance and uh, also we don't need cryptography at all sometimes so uh, what we thought was to develop a kernel module to make uh, IP tunnels in UDP directly in the kernel with no encryption just to have this possible, just to have this architecture possible and we have this finished uh, I want to show you, how do I get Firefox here? Claudio, Firefox because I have to show the code <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so if you are interested in testing this, you can come to me later. Anyway, we have uh, the implementation working is on the SVN of Linux. You will find uh, if it opens up, stop downloading. If you, <laughs> okay, in our SVN, there is a folder. Come on. I should have prepared this before. Okay, so it's here. IP UDP. This is the working code that we tested uh, when we finished the project in the summer. And the code is divided in basically two parts the kernel space module and the user space tool to configure the tunnels okay our initial idea was to patch directly IP route but we had not enough time for that uh, and so we, we have uh, an external external user space tool and you can set up uh, two kind of tunnels basically what happens when you use our kernel module you have a virtual interface and if it's a point-to-point -point link um, you can configure here. Okay, so this is the two folders, the configuration tool and the kernel module, and all you need is here in the readme file <coughs> that I'm going to show you. Okay, so we have two modes. One mode we call it the fixed mode, where you have an a interface, and this interface represents a point to point tunnel. So you know that whatever you put on that interface is going to go on the other end of the tunnel and you can configure this working at the same time IPv6 and IPv4 then you have a different kind of interface when, where you have a unique interface but actually you have more tunnels and so there is an internal routing engine and you can actually send the packet to different destinations depending on how you set your policies okay is that clear? Not really. Okay, okay, you all know Toon Tap interface, right? Okay. You can have a tap interface hmm, in a big VPN, and when you send the packet to your, uh, to your interface, actually there are more security associations, and depending on the destination of the packet, it will go one day or the other, okay? Think of, for example, everybody maybe is familiar with Think VPN, the software you have one tap interface but then you have different security association with other hosts or you have simpler scenarios when you have one interface and you just have a tunnel uh, this is simpler okay we implemented both the cases here okay so there is not much more to show uh, if yeah uh, how are you doing that in kernel space? To Exactly, but this is much faster. We did benchmarks, yeah. yeah. We did benchmarks with uh, OpenVPN and uh, uh, our implementation. Huh? No, no, with encryption disabled. Because we uh, basically, we save the time that the packet needs to go from kernel space, go up again uh, in a user space, make encapsulation, come back. It's very, it's much better. It's, it's not even comparable. The the delay. I don't have the graph here, but I can send it in the mailing list. Yeah. So we also did the same because we have the similar uh, topology as in Dias. And the problem of, of Foneras, for example, we tested on Foneras and Nixis, is that the context switches are really expensive. 
So uh, without even OpenVPN, without the encryption, the maximum throughput you can get over OpenVPN is 2 megabits per second. And that's maximum because of the CPU, not of the link. Uh, and the reason is context switches, not encryption, not anything else. So moving this to the kernel is requirement. Requirement yeah. for anything faster than 2 megabits. Okay, and, uh, and but the other question is why, uh, why aren't you using GRE? Okay, and GRE, the problem is that doesn't always work on the real internet because this stuff is very uh, strong against the NAT traversal, and GRE is not. Yeah. Uh, the so. problem is that you don't want to have special IP uh, protocol, uh, <coughs> uh, protocol over IP header, but you don't want to have it with PDP because it gets through the uh, simple net, uh, fiber. But G has special, uh, its own ID for uh, IPM. Yeah. So this, this is finished, I mean, this is uh, already usable. So our, uh, now our message is use it and uh, we need to make the final effort to have this stuff committed in the kernel. This is the, the idea. Yeah, and supported by IP root. But that's the uh, smallest uh, part, you know? So, okay, one idea is if we get uh, into the Google Summer of Code again, is to have a student, this time maybe a junior student, you know, because the hard part is already done, to uh, make the patch for IP root and take care of pushing this stuff in the kernel, you know? So read all the complaints from the kernel developer and fix there and that, but the, the hard yeah, part... I think it's junior. No, okay. It's <laughs> probably the harder part. It's the harder? Yes. Okay. Too bad. <laughs> well, but the, the point is with the resources we had, this is what we produced. And uh, uh, we are happy that we have this. Uh, and, and, and it's working for you? you it's working, yeah. But we tried only uh, on um, test scenarios. You know, we don't have it in production environment. Okay. We have it, uh, we, we had test beds in, with virtual machines and stuff. And have you tested on both IP before and IP before? Yes, yes. And it works. And that's this no, it uses uh, most of stuff that uh, was already in the kernel, oh. yeah. Okay. But if you see the code, uh, it's not a lot of code. We did not uh, re-implement things. Okay. So, well, but anyway, this was a lightning talk, just because I... I didn't code it, it was my student, I just gave general advice, so I, can't, I cannot even go too deep uh, inside the implementation. It was just to say, this stuff exists, and so have a look at it. Uh, Marco, probably, the developer, will join us uh, in Berlin at the Wireless Community Weekend, so maybe if you want more details, make sure you contact him so we can arrange maybe a dev room there, or something like that. Meter, are you next? You want both the microphone and the flowers? Uh, <laughs> no, microphone you need for the video. Come here. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so last year. Um, our network, Volan uh, Ljubljana and now Volan Slovenia, slowly uh, also participated under the Free Funk um, um, as um, they, they were all of us an umbrella organization and we were like one of organizations and uh, were proposed one application for Android phones and other uh, mobile phones. The idea was to um, make uh, some, some smaller framework, uh, GUI framework, for uh, routing protocols so that it, it, it would be easy for um, uh, um, people to have running also uh, our that was the primary uh, routing protocol we are tar targeting on the uh, Android phone. Uh, so you can just, the idea was that you can just press a button and it would start running daemon because currently the OSR is running on the uh, Android phones but you have to go into the um, deep levels of the Android phone and run it manually and so on. So the idea was to make it GUI, and then the other the second idea was to make it in it um, 
in so abstract uh, way so that it can be used also for other protocols and also for other platforms so that we can make some uh, general GUI for routing protocols which would have some uh, diagnostic tools, uh, auto configuration and a simple on off button for users so that it will be also for desktop users and everybody who wants but start uh, sub point was for making it uh, run on Android uh, so this is our um, idea we get few proposals uh, choose the student and then started uh, somehow uh, making the idea um, some plan so this is uh, the result of this first step what uh, with our student did so it was Charles from uh, Houston Houston uh, USA uh, so the idea is to make like um, you can open the web page if you want and read a little bit more uh, to make it like a model view controller in the sense that you have a view which is uh, independent of on the platform you are using for example on Android it's Java on um, some other devices maybe uh, Qt and so on Qt uh, then you have a control which is uh, some platform uh, agnostic um, component which um, into which you uh, call with callbacks and you then have a model view which is a model uh, component which is in some sense um, um, uh, talks with um, with um, um, routing protocol and configures things so the state of the uh, of the device is the model you are we are talking about it's not the proper division but somehow like that um, so we, we, we set some uh, milestones what you want to do uh, the idea is somehow that this application would be useful for um, end users to enable easy access uh, to the mesh networks and for developers or maintainers of the network to have a small tool to diagnostic, di 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 diagnose the, the network you are in see the links and so on uh, this was the aim. Uh, sadly, our the project didn't really uh, finish that, or it <laughs> didn't even finish even a part of that. So the, that is one negative experience we had. So the the, the student uh, tried a lot, but at the end, it it, it it was shown that without previous experience with mesh networks and. Um, uh, it is hard to to um, have a good picture of what exactly and how exactly um, would um, should things work and so on. So we spent a lot of time um, um, designing it and and and, and uh, guiding it, but uh, it was hard because he was not. Um, we, 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 he was in USA and we were in Slovenia, so it, there was no uh, no possible for um, 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 contact in life, which could probably. E, uh, solve a few problems uh, so there is not no working uh, result uh, there are quite good uh, documentation and that's almost everything we got from it uh, so some things which were problem in the code we were he was developing and it was the so the problem of of course on the Android phone you have to have root access uh, for um, routing protocols uh, and how to configure ad hoc mode um, so that it works, that you can c configure it on on, on different uh, kinds of uh, Android phones because there is no um, official support. Um, uh, then um, uh, those three are the biggest problems. So we are trying to solve it componently, uh, but with components and so on. Uh, so yeah, so you, I'm sad to announce that there is nothing to try but I would maybe um, use this um, experience to um, propose some ideas for this year's Google Summer of Code especially on the part of selecting the student um, so we, we, I think we, we did two mistakes when we were doing the selection the first one that was that because he was from that's my uh, interpretation because he was from USA he really wrote very well his proposal with good language, uh, uh, well developed language, good ideas, uh, but the ex execution of these ideas were bad. So, some, somehow the bias because of the language or the proficiency of language uh, was probably also the reason uh, why he was uh, looking promis promising, but the, then in the end um, it turned out that uh, he 
um, ha has problems executing the his ideas. Uh, so he promised a lot, and 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 it seemed very good. Uh, the other thing, when uh, then later on we, we we were discussing with Mozilla people, also on the mailing list, uh, what are they, they are doing with um, so um, contributors which haven't yet been, um, uh, which with with whom they di didn't have yet any contact, and they don't know how well they are, and so on. And uh, very good proposal, I, I would suggest everybody to try is, and we haven't yet tried, but I, I think it's really good, is that you simply uh, open a pirate pet, at a pet uh, web page, um, document, and you give a homework, please, in front of my eyes, uh, code something, you know. And I believe this really shows uh, how well some, somebody is doing it and the way he is programming it, you know. Does it just copy and paste and do trial and error programming, you know, uh, type in, in Google program and uh, problem and then see if it compiles or does he really understand and, and, and produces code uh, independently and so on. So this is, I think, the, something I would like to suggest. So Etherpad, uh, um, for, every, for every student, Etherpad um, test and, and to try um, to not be influenced by good proposals, but maybe uh, more about um, previous work on other projects and, and the test itself. Um, Mark, do we have uh, another project? Yeah, we have another project. Maybe before you go on and about talking about your experience. Because at, at the end... We yeah, yeah so I finished now, I finished now. Yeah, so this is the... Because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah. stay here, and then after huh? the end we will try to... Okay. So this is it. So the, these are the ideas, um, conclusions, and uh, we will try it again this year to finish it. And if somebody is interested in that uh, and we are accepted, then we, watch, we will know that in two hours at 8 o'clock. We will know the announcements for this year, Google Summer Code, a uh, mentoring organization. So, yeah. Um, okay. Thanks. And who is next? Next is the OSR. Last year we had a Google Summer of Code student who want to work on an iterative Dijkstra design. This year, uh, instead of calculating all this stuff, routing every time again, 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 only apply, apply, uh, apply small changes to the last results. Uh, I would say the result, we had a mixed result with this. Um, we had some code, but it wasn't really working. And I would say the most, li most likely, either the target was too difficult or the, there were two not enough steps in between. So in the end, M Markus Kittenberg had, uh, took over the resulting code and began to clean it up. But I, say, I think that's a, real, that's a, real, that's a really uh, impor important thing, what, uh, what, what we, uh, what we sh should have uh, done before, getting more steps in between. For to, uh, so there's more communication between the wor uh, work of the Google Summer of Code and the mentor. So, where was your student from? Maybe can mm. He was from. Uh, should I take over now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So I wanted to say also a few things about how it actually works now. It's not only negative; it also actually really works now. Whoop, does the, does this work here? The microphone. Yeah, okay. Just for uh, it's for just for recording. Okay. So. Um, the student was from Brazil. He was a PhD student from Brazil. He uh, wanted to do that uh, project anyway, so it seems, seemed like he, had, he needed very little mentoring. So it just started. We had just some email discussions in the beginning. It was very clear in which direction he wanted to go, and it would fit to, to the protocol. Now, let me just say a few words why this is important, this iter iterative Dijkstra. You know, from OLSR, the link state routing approach, uh, essentially OSPF style uh, routing protocol. Uh, anything that you can save with the shortest path calculations allows you to, to do two things. First of all, s save CPU power. Second of all, calculate more often. Okay? Uh, the, the big uh, disadvantage of the link state routing protocols is desynchronization of routing tables. We all know that. So if you can synchronize quicker and calculate quicker again, uh, then you get, then you minimize the time of any routing loops. So this is actually really very important to have some some algorithm like that. And it turns out that the, as Henning said, the initial version of the code was, um, according to Markus, who should have been here and talking instead of me, 
um, was not really very useful, full of bugs, S typical student project, right? But uh, Marco spent a considerable am amount of time to clean it up, and actually he's very happy with it now, and we'll have it in one of the next versions. It's very simple. And uh, it uh, reduces uh, the amount of calculation again massively, and we can do calculations more often. That's it. So I would say overall, thanks to Marcus, it was a big success. Who was the mentor? Han Hannes. Hannes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. No. Hannes Dickler wrote the original DAX implementation we have currently, and he said yes, he would mentor and this guy because the student said he didn't need that much mentoring, he had already a lot of knowledge about it. Yeah. But unfortunately, in the end, a little, a little bit more mentoring would have been better. Yeah. And milestones would have been better in this yeah. case. So, in any next school, some of code project for anybody, we hi highly, highly recommend more mentoring. It just it takes lots of time, but it's necessary. And um, and Hannes at that time was already very skeptical. Me too. If actually this incremental Dijkstra could still top it with uh, with the performance, because all the data structures had been so optimized already in the pre in the previous Dijkstra that Hannes did, that we thought it's like you won't notice much difference. But actually, um, it it seems to have paid off, according to Markus. Okay. We did some, Marcus and me did some uh, measurements without changing the routing protocol itself, just replacing the Dijkstra, and according to our tests, it, even without share changes and exploiting this uh, iterative structure, we can save CPU power. Yeah. So, I don't know if it was clear, but this iterative Dijkstra essentially just recalculates the routes in that region of the network where something changed and doesn't do the other recalculations in the other parts of the topology. That's the idea. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, we want to discuss. Yeah, maybe you talk a little bit about the upcoming stuff. And yeah. Uh, all right. So now the idea is to have a little brainstorming session about uh, Google Summer of Code because uh, many of us are. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 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 Okay. So. Yeah. The, okay. The idea is that Google Summer of Code involved uh, many of the people here because uh, Fryphone for two years was accepted, but uh, uh, did not uh, manage the Google Summer of Code alone, but acted as an umbrella. Taking inside the Linux and OSR and Viana and OpenWrt. Open yeah, so it's a very open community, and uh, as always, the more is open, the more there are problems to solve. <laughs> so, uh, Boshi, I'm here. Yeah. Pay attention. <laughs> Talking about the future of Google Summer of Code. The future? Okay. See. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, Actually, uh, I was telling that Fryfoon for the second year is in the Google Summer of Code, yes. all right? And that Fryfoon did not uh, <coughs> approach the Google Summer of Code as just an easy thing, but open it as an umbrella involving many other realities. And uh, I think it's important to have this open discussion because last year we had tons of email at the time of choosing the students. Because actually, uh, the problem is that Fryfoon is not that pure software project. Okay. Freifunk is for supporting wireless networks. And so there are many software going uh, in this uh, direction, in the real field. Yeah. And when we have to choose students, uh, there is not clear strategy, you know? Okay. Uh, and there are, there are also like two main... Uh, uh, I don't know. But this stuff is public. Yeah, no, 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 no. Because it would be good to record it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, I was to record it. Yeah. You want this, yeah? Yes. You're now it's recording. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. there's no light. Okay, sorry. No, it's definitely to... Uh, I was saying, and also there are two very different ways of choosing students, because our is an already a community, so we could, like, get students that are already involved in the community uh, to make them work. Uh, in the summer with a bigger effort because they're paid. Oh, 
or we can get completely unknown people from all the world and with the uh, possibility, you know, they get the chance of knowing Fridon because of the Google Summer of Code and maybe they get stick in the community even when this is finished. Okay? So this is two, the two edges, you know, the two completely different approaches. And then we also now, it's two years that we are doing Google Summer of Code, so we have some data about uh, uh, failing projects and uh, successful projects. And uh, well, I, I think we should do a uh, reasoning all together on, uh, on this. Because, for, for example, I noticed that when we choose people that were already inside the community, we always had uh, successful software with little mentoring. And when we had uh, uh, people attracted from outside, we had big mentoring and little. No? So, that's also uh, the main list of the mentoring uh, of all organizations. There are also uh, all the time, we are not the only one who has uh, experience and issues with that and I think but there is a lot of discussions and I was following all this and yes, there was always, uh, that's true, that also other relations to notice that, that the students which are uh, approach them before the Google Summer, so it is not necessarily that they are already active, but that they approach I know, already half a year before and say, hey, I know that there will be a Google Summer of Code, uh, I would like to get in touch, I would like to try to send this patch, which is a small patch for something I was doing and so on, and then later on also apply for Google Summer of Code, or uh, more and more successful than somebody who just drops in because he sees you on the list of many applications and sends you one one uh, proposal and you don't know him and anything, you know. So yeah, so this is your uh, like that's uh, like also the their experience that uh, already so already existing me uh, members of the community but it doesn't really necessarily that it's uh, like known in person in person but somebody who had made some effort. Before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there is not uh, one right choice, just yeah. one, because now, uh, now we have Freifunk again applied, and in a couple of hours we should have the yeah, answer. Yeah. 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 So how many organizations applied in this year? Freifunk, Nino, yeah. and Yana. Yeah. Yeah. So, in, in, in the best case, we are all in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we were involved in because we just generated our web page in this, so, you know, uh, it's strangely it's strange that they can see, okay, this is some but they're trying to uh, something to something. <laughs> I mean, uh, as Linux, we in the past yeah. we always had uh, successful uh, projects. But I have to say that when we choose our students, we have been very uh, uh, afraid of getting new people because we were uh, afraid that these new people will want to finish the projects, you know. And because we wanted to have finished projects, you know, uh, we. All, we always try to get people we from. I would like to also emphasize that this is nothing wrong with taking people we already know. You know? So, because at the last year when we were choosing the students, somehow, there were some of our internal against uh, talks around. You, you, you shouldn't you know, just give this to your people. You, know? uh, yeah. you should open it. But no, in fact, uh, after reading, after writing more and more on the main list of Google Summer Talk, the mentoring organization, I think this is also one of. Uh, um, goals, you know, to uh, flourish your own people and students you already have, you know, and, and, and because you can pay them for two months of work, they can really um, work more yeah, and focus, yeah. you know, not to think about how much they eat and so on, you know. So this is nothing wrong and we, we should, uh, like, wrong in sense, you know, if you're trying to take my hand for you, you know, because it has some distaste, but it's, uh, it's nothing wrong and they are doing it and so on. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the question we are trying to solve? Well, at the moment, like, it's, it's not a question. Reflection, reflection, I think. Yeah, it's more like a... We can't get any reflections on the last year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So maybe I, I, can, I can try what I can see from the, from the Freifold perspective. Um, we announced a number of projects, and some of the slots got filled, and uh, it was some really strange things happened. Uh, for example, after a while, one of our mentors realized that two people, two students, are working on the same project with different uh, uh, backends. So it was a duplicate of effort. So um, we, I would recommend to be very clear about who will be mentoring what and limit uh, the mentoring uh, to a maximum of two projects or two students or something. So, so a mentor does not just lose the overview of what's actually happening or should happen. So, 
Um, that was one thing. And uh, because of people being very busy during the summer, some projects didn't get very much attention from the mentoring side. So the students uh, got frustrated and the mentors got frustrated as well. There was no progress. The discussions about uh, do we uh, finish this project or not? What, how to deal with the student side? So is the student just lazy or is it uh, the communication which is not? So it's lots of issues mixed. So maybe one thing to learn from this as well is uh, mentors should be chosen widely and maybe we should discuss our, as mentors, yeah. 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 Be, discuss our strategy, how we in general deal with communication, what we do expect from the students, maybe make a guideline or such things. Yes. Uh, I will just share it, maybe. Sorry. Sorry. Ah, okay. I think one, one of the things I've seen with the pro, uh, project suggested for, for the, what is a part of the Trifon to yeah. some of the was there were always some the suggestions that were pretty, uh, sounded pretty easy, and there were some who said, okay, that sounds really difficult. Yeah. And it might be a bad idea to get totally unknown people for the difficult projects. They like them because they say, hey, that's, uh, I want to do this, and I, would, I can do this, but it's, so, uh, most, uh, most times it's really hard to get a good, good result where you can work on. But unfortunately, the easier parts are often get no attraction at all from people. So there's been some suggestions, and no one was interested in doing it. And I'm pretty sure it would be possible to do it. So that's sometimes a little bit, a little bit sad, I think. That people always want to try the real hard projects, and then, and then, and then, and then maybe people just uh, just get a, you get an incomplete state and have to not another half a year work by some people of the project to get to a final result. You should never believe when the students say that he is able to do yes. He doesn't yeah. know the code. You you know code much more and you know the program much more than he does. Uh, so, but I, I think this can be solved if, if he approaches uh, uh, early because he can before he submits the proposal because then he, you can advise him, you know, this is really a hard part for him, maybe choose some of the others, you know, because we know that it's hard enough. And it's the problem is you yeah, often have people saying, okay, no, I don't get this project, I will deal somewhere else. So yeah. you cannot so really mess up like it. Yeah, another thing I, I, I propose is because we have the, uh, the teacher, I would say, but we are not a proper software project, we are a community, okay? So when we attract new people to work on our projects, we can get new people, but we could get them from our communities, like I do an example. In Berlin, there is the C base, you know? You can get a new student from the C base, and you can actually see him weekly, you know? Yeah. You don't need to get a new student from anywhere, but it's very hard to communicate with over the internet, because after all, we have uh, limited energy for mentoring, you know? So I agree it's very good to have a new uh, person that is not in Freifunk or in Linux already, but I think it would be also smart to get a new person from the city, so that when the Google Summer of Codes finishes, then this person more easily could be in the community, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, this is the... But this idea comes because uh, Freifunk is not a software project, you know? It is a wider... Uh, we had this with one student in 2010, or oh, nine? No, the first time, nine, yeah? And this guy was uh, coming to Fusola, but he was not Linux, and uh, he was involved in the Freiman project, and now he's an active community member. So this was a successful uh, story, you know? Uh, I think also Miller can have similar experiences yeah. in his city, yeah. I agree with that, 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 that Google Summer Code could be also uh, for a good thing for other people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to add. I want to add uh, before to your uh, I think that we as mentors should also uh, sometimes when you don't have time tell others you don't have time any you can jump in also as a mentor. Yeah. Uh, so if you and I think also also among the communities, you know, so because some projects you are doing are maybe interesting also for somebody else and if, if you don't have in Linux time anymore, maybe somebody from Framefunk can uh, yeah. or some yeah. other, other community uh, can jump in. So we are quite deep. In the sense also of there is participating mentors, 
Yeah. So if you don't have time, uh, we should, as mentors should say, uh, be frank about that and don't be ashamed that something. And let's just say, please help me. And then, then uh, not doing anything. You know? And I think we have enough channels of communication to uh, send such uh, call for help. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I think also maybe we should give a little space because the guys from Pisa. They want to present the, their ideas for 2011 okay. because uh, they brought. Uh, 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 maybe not now because we're already done with Oh, we're running late. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, so we just continue talking about the. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, maybe we can slowly come to an end and then yeah. we can. Yeah, we can uh, always uh, attend. You know, we can always attend. Yeah, later, I, I think most of the discussion is uh, came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, for my experience, I, we have some experience with somebody completely new. Yeah. And this is the interpret is the solution uh, to see is it that, it, that, it, that does he lies about what how good he is, you know? Uh, and you should you, you should you know he doesn't know, you know, he doesn't know, you know, he doesn't know if you say okay, you say there is our code, it's just fine, we have to change me, please show me and you will see, you know. And he is he. Uh, so uh, this is good and definitely uh, what we miss a lot and I I was saying I want to miss a lot is the possibility of life. Communication because if I would be able to sit with him two hours and show him, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. two weeks of work would be solved. Of course, yeah, of course. Yeah. So, this is really important for me. So, yeah, I agree completely that maybe we should focus on uh, new people, but from, from, uh, from somewhere you can sit in the same at least yeah. few times. Maybe we can be in other city, but at least few times or uh, something else. And yeah. the other side? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't uh, agree with two of the, the points you raised. First of all, I think we should be as open as possible. Like, personally, I took part in 2009. Can you go here? Yeah, go here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I took part in uh, with Frank from the, in 2009, and uh, like, I'm from Israel, and there was no chance of me to actually get in touch with the people over there. So, if, if you follow your suggestion to, to keep it open, you know, people. I wouldn't have had any chance to be part. And another thing is just that any of your organizations that are going to uh, basically mentor students, that you also mentioned that you have limited um, mentoring and resources, so I suggest that you think twice because I am, um, well, I had a, well, my mentor was practically non existent. So I uh, just suggest that if you offer to mentor someone, you do allocate a sufficient amount of time because I think it's a big part of the, um, the whole idea of the project so just be responsible and you know and to try to nurture and say that you know, it's a student. Yeah. I agree with that yeah. I tried a lot but then you know it is just um, a trade off you know uh, of how much energy you know you know when, when it gets to this point that you are trying to see that if you Spend that time putting it on, and you would do it better and faster. You know, uh, it is uh, it, 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 it is then try hard to make it operational. Of course, you're saying yes. Uh, I I am nurturing another one, and it's easy, you know. But it is hard. You know? That's why I'm saying that it is important to choose. I'm not saying that we should choose somebody around the world uh, to, and all around locally. But if we are choosing somebody who we don't know, we should make sure that he. Uh, has uh, a potential that we not in a sense to test him to uh, his coding skills, not only his uh, skills yeah. of proposal. So you should so always try to get as, as much as uh, uh, an accurate impression yeah, of yeah, like, yeah. what the screen can do. Of course, yeah. I think you should just think of it in the same way as you think of the way you place an uh, email offer, you know, you have a test amount of time, and if it goes uh, beyond or lower, you know, you just. Uh, but you have a, like a general concept of how much time you want to, make, to put into mentoring, and you know hopefully the project turns uh, successful. I uh, think that the idea of uh, involving uh, more locals than people uh, around the world is also because we want to give a proper mentoring. So yes, if we have uh, like ten students, maybe we get one or two from uh, places where we don't get in touch physically, and the others local. So we can mentor properly. If we get all from all the world, we are not going to mentor anybody. This was the reason. So, trade yeah, off. But I agree, we should, do, uh, we should work with other global because 
we also like probably all of us that such networks spread also elsewhere, you know what I'm saying? And then we, we slowly come yeah. to... Okay, yeah, we, we, can, we can continue off yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks.